Good evening. Welcome to a regular meeting of the Glendale Planning Commission. Today's date is Wednesday, January 18th, 2017. The time is 5.04. And we have a roll call, please. Planning Commissioners, Astorian. Here. Landrigan. Here. Manukian. Here. Shabazian. And Chairperson Lee. Here. And we have a report regarding posting of agenda. The agenda for this meeting was posted on Wednesday, January 12th, 2017 on the bulletin board outside City Hall and on the city's website. Thank you. Can we have Commissioner Manukia and lead Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Please sit it. Okay, next we have election of chairperson and chairperson pro tem. Uh, so uh, we have a, the whole thing here, okay. It is time to elect a new chairperson. First, I'll ask step to open the election process. They'll ask nomination, nominations, no second is needed. After all, nomination have been received, step will call for a vote on the first nomination. If a majority vote is received, then a new chairperson is elected. If not, then staff will repeat the voting process with the second nomination until a new chairperson is elected. Staff, are we ready to start the election? Uh, yes, nominations are now in order. Are there any nominations? Mr. Chair, I'd like to nominate Commissioner Manukian. The long tradition of the party members at the rotation of chair. Um, are there any further nominations? I'm hearing none. If there are no further nominations, nominations for chair are now closed. Um, uh, Commissioner Manukian is nominated for chairperson. Roll call, please. Planning Commissioners Astorian. Yes. Landrigan. Yes. Lee. Aye. Manukian. Same. And congratulations, Aye. Chairman Manukian. Yes. Then we would want to have nominations for the chair pro tem. So I nominate uh, Commissioner Landrigan. Are there any further nominations? Commissioner Landrigan declined. I may not be a planning commissioner after the election because I am a uh, former council member. Um, Friedman's appointee, so um, my term runs with her term, so I would not want to put the commission in a position of not having a, a pro tem, but thank you. I'm very honored with the uh, nomination. So, so, Ms. Landrigan, this was an interview so we can keep you further. <laughs> Perhaps a subtle message to the next council person. <coughs> well, uh, Fine, then. I'll accept. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, if there's no further nominations, nominations are now closed. A uh, roll call, please. Planning Commissioners Astorian. Yes. Landrigan. Abstain. Lee. Yes. Manukia. Yes. Very good. Moving on to uh, item number five on our agenda, approval of minutes for the December 7th, 2016 regular meeting of the Planning Commission. Second. Okay. Moving on to item number uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Chair. I, my silence was not approval. I have to recuse myself as part of the proceedings so I would abstain. Approval or not. Nice. All right. But we nevertheless can move on to item number six oral communications regarding discussions which are limited to items not uh, on our agenda. Each speaker is limited to five minutes. The commission may question the speaker, but there will be no debate or decision. I do not see, I do not see any uh, pink uh, slips relating to a 
Agenda item number six. Uh, number seven, ro uh, zoning appeals, we have none. And then item number eight, planning commission items, all business. Zoning map amendment, zoning change case number PZC1602270. It's continued from our December 7, 2016 regular meeting. Do we have a staff report? We do, thank you. Good evening, um, members of the Planning Commission. Uh, Con Consulting is requesting uh, approval of a zone map amendment to change the approved plans on an existing precise plan of design, a PPD overlay zone, on property located at 533-539 East Elk Avenue. You will be providing a recommendation to the, to the City Council Approval by the City Council amending the PPD zone would result in a new right turn only lane, right turn only egress, I should say, from the subject site onto East Elk Avenue. Uh, construction of this driveway would result in a two space reduction in the number of parking spaces uh, in the existing parking lot of John's, uh, relocation of the um, uh, accessibility ramp, the pedestrian accessibility ramp, and a slight increase in the amount of, of on-site landscaping. Uh, actually, the plans are in, in back of you, um, both the current or the existing plot plan as well as what's proposed. Uh, the 31,300 acre, I should say square foot site, um, is John's Market. Uh, the project site contains an uh, approximately 15,000 square foot <coughs> commercial building and 58 uh, parking spaces. Uh, the site is made up of uh, six lots. The lots fronting Colorado, the four lots fronting Colorado are zoned uh, C3. The two lots uh, fronting Elk are zoned R2250 with uh, PPD and parking overlay. Vehicle access to the site is from Colorado Avenue. However, um, there is pedestrian access from, uh, <coughs> from Elk. No current <coughs> automobile access from Elk Avenue. Uh, in 1986, the council approved a zone change for the properties adjacent to Elk Avenue um, and placed the parking and the precise plan of design <coughs> overlays over those two lots. Uh, the PPD overlay zone um, are, are really tied to the development on that, um, in, that in that zone uh, <coughs> and substantial changes to those plans require uh, approval of the zone map amendment. So the applicant is requesting a right hand turn, -only, turn only egress from the subject site onto Elk Avenue um, and given the change in traffic and um, circulation uh, items in that in that area, uh, staff thought it was significant enough <coughs> to warrant uh, requesting of the PPD application before you this afternoon, this evening. As I mentioned before, the applicant is requesting a proposed right-hand turning turn only uh, egress from the subject site onto Elk Avenue. Uh, this is on the western portion of the site, um, closest to the uh, commercial areas on the <coughs> corner of Elk and um, I believe it's Glendale in that area. The egress will be 14 feet wide and is, cur and is curved, uh, which is designed in such a way as to discourage and make difficult <coughs> um, turning left from the site onto Elk Avenue. The new egress will eliminate two on-site parking spaces. So the uh, on-site parking will go from 58 <coughs> spaces to 56 spaces. Um, and some of the buffer landscaping, and that landscaping uh, is between the Elk Avenue right-of-way and the, the on-site parking. So that's, mm. there will be some elimination of that landscaping, obviously, to provide the driveway. Um, Additional landscaping, however, <coughs> is proposed in a fairly large landscape island within the parking area itself. So that's why, um, while the applicant is requesting additional paving in, in, in terms of the 
driveway, some of the paving will be eliminated within the parking area to provide landscaping. So that's why there's a slight increase in the amount of landscaping. <coughs> um, the driveway will also require relocation of the, uh, the accessibility ramp, and you can see that on the plans. No other changes to the site or the building, no changes to the building are proposed as a result of the uh, zone change application. The provisions of the zone underlying the PPD apply, except uh, specific, as specifically detailed in the PPD approved by City Council. So the project proposal does request some flexibility in the zoning regulations. Um, that includes uh, the street front setback. So the R2250 zone requires a 20-foot minimum, 23-foot average street front setback. Um, the existing wall located between the surface parking lot and Elk Avenue is set back approximately 11 feet from the street front property line. Uh, in the western portion of the site, obviously, <coughs> this wall is going to be removed, demolished to construct the egress um, and the accessibility ramp. No changes to the eastern portion of the wall are proposed. And this wall is currently existing. The eastern portion is... is going to remain as is. Uh, so that was one deviation. The other is, the second one is uh, landscaping. Uh, in the R2250 zone, 25%, um, a minimum of 25% of the lot area uh, needs to be permanently landscaped open space. So um, the portion of the site that is zoned R2250, which is approximately 13,500 square feet, uh, about 33, 3,400 square feet needed to be landscaped. Currently, uh, it's about half that. 1,836 square feet is, um, is landscaped. Um, but, as I, but as I previously mentioned, there is a slight increase in the amount of landscaping due to the landscape island within the parking lot. So that increases to 1,858 square feet. <coughs> so that's a slight improvement in the current situation. Um, and aside from the elimination of the landscaping to allow for the driveway and the provision of providing the landscape island within the parking lot that now does not exist, there aren't any other changes to the landscaping. So finally, the other um, uh, deviation is is with regard to parking. Uh, as previously mentioned, the building, uh, John's <coughs> Market, is um, just, well, it's just over 14,000 square feet, 14,393 square feet. Uh, the zoning code, as you may know, requires retail um, provide uh, four parking spaces per 1,000 square feet of site area or uh, <coughs> a building area. So that translates into to 58 parking spaces. Uh, with the elimination of two parking spaces due to the uh, driveway, the proposed driveway egress, um, two spaces would be eliminated, so there would be 56 on-site parking spaces. So that would be um, a deviation from code that the PPD would allow if it was approved. Uh, staffs Staff supports the recommended amendment <coughs> to the PPD, largely due to safety and internal circulation improvements. Um, currently, there's only one entrance to and exit from this site, uh, and that is on Colorado, uh, Colorado Street. Um, it's, it's a busy ingress-egress. There are cars going into the site, coming out of the site. There is significant... Um, pedestrian traffic on Colorado Street as well as pedestrians sort of within the site that are parked that are crossing to get to the market entrance which um, faces Colorado. So anybody going into the market needs that has parked <coughs> uh, needs to basically cross the driveway or, or cross the, the, the drive aisle to get into John's. So um, the, the 
proposed new egress with, onto Elk Avenue will improve and make safer exiting the site uh, and internal circulation since um, automobile traffic to get out of the site now <coughs> sort of has to turn around. Instead, they can just go through the site onto Elk and exit uh, right onto Elk Avenue. So with the, the driveway, the proposed driveway, uh, internal circulation will be improved and um, the safety, particularly at the, the um, entrance to the site, will be improved. Uh, there are six findings that need to be made in order to approve the requested PPD. And those findings were contained in the staff report as well as the uh, ordinance that you all should have received a copy of. Uh, staff does believe that the findings can be made in the affirmative. Uh, a negative declaration was prepared for the proposed project. Um, there was a, one mitigation measure which requires the applicant to uh, provide and uh, also get approval from staff some landscape plans for the uh, landscape area, the buffer landscape area between the street right of way and the on-site parking lot. Uh, just to ensure that there's adequate buffering and also that visibility is maintained from the site onto Elk Avenue. We did receive a couple uh, letters uh, regarding the project and those were um, placed on your desk before you. Uh, so staff is recommending the Planning Commission approve, re or I should say, recommending the Planning Commission recommend approval of the proposed PPD to the City Council. Uh, there's, a draft re there's a draft motion recommending certification and adoption of the negative, neg mitigated negative declaration uh, and adoption of the ordinance for the zone change. Uh, and both of those were included in your packets. So that concludes my presentation. If you have any questions. Is this an exit only driveway? It is, yes. You want to follow up? No, I don't have a follow up. I do have a question uh, following up. Uh, there was no thought given <coughs> to uh, making the current uh, driveway a one way driveway such so that off of Colorado. Off of Colorado, you come it? into the site and off of. Elk, Elk you go them. out. Um, not that I know of. Um, that may be <coughs> a question that the applicant um, ha has. It, it occurred to them. I, I don't know. Okay. I do have one more. Um, one of the issues I have here is that the existing plot plan and proposed plot plan that is presented here has different numbers than are in the staff report. It actually says. Uh, <coughs> required parking is 55 spaces instead of 58. So th right. these are inconsistent with it? Correct, yeah. Um, thanks for pointing that out. Actually, um, the, the existing John's Market um, has, I'm just going to call it a loft. There's a, there's a second floor. Mezzanine or something. Mezzanine, yeah, that's probably a better word. Um, and the numbers that uh, were included on the plans didn't include the <coughs> mezzanine square footage. And so with, with some back and forth with the applicant, um, I determined that it was floor area square footage and it needed to be calced in with the parking standards as well as that was part of floor area of the building. So that's those are the discrepancies. That's why there's a discrepancy. Since there are no further questions, uh, let's hear it from the applicant who is represented by Rodney Kahn. Thanks. Mr. Kahn, uh, you have 15 minutes to make your uh, client's representation. Great. Thank you very much. Uh, congratulations, uh, Chairman Manukian, uh, commissioners, and city staff. My name is Rodney Kahn. My offices are located on Brand Boulevard here in the city of Glendale. The, uh, John's Market is a neighborhood market. This market is. And it serves this immediate area. In fact, we get a tremendous amount of pedestrians walking. We also get 
uh, residents taking the bus to walk over, and of course they drive their cars as well uh, to our market. As stated in the report, and as Mr. Kiesel pointed out, um, everything bottlenecks at this one driveway. So you have the pedestrians crossing, you have cars that are backing in and out on uh, Colorado, and you also have deliveries. And so all of this kind of comes together at this one point. And so I had discussions with both the police department and with traffic and transportation about this. And both of those departments stated that this secondary egress only driveway uh, improves the safety and makes the most sense. So that's why we designed it that way. Uh, John O. Bogdanian is here. He performed a traffic analysis, an access and circulation study, and I believe that was included as part of your staff report um, package. Uh, a few things. Uh, one, we are eliminating two parking spaces, and I want to speak to that uh, as well. Uh, the two parking spaces will actually be replaced. They will be replaced off-site, not on-site, um, but we will be replacing them. Uh, we've had discussions uh, with the next door neighbor, which is the Los Angeles Federal Credit Union. They have a very large parking structure there. Um, we also have had and able to secure at a nearby church. So all within close proximity and we'll provide documentation to the city to replace those two spaces. <coughs> the square footage question that Commissioner Landrigan uh, asked about in terms of clarification, the actual building overall is 14,393 square feet. And it was originally listed as 13,655 square feet with a 738 square foot mezzanine. Uh, that mezzanine is used for storage. We thought that that area, because it was used for storage, was not required to be parked. And as Mr. Kiesel pointed out, because it's actually because the ceiling height, not the use, the ceiling height is over, I think it's six feet. It's considered floor area, so we need to park it. Nevertheless, we are parking it. Um, there is a corner shopping center on the cor south east corner of Colorado and Elk. And it's called the Moon Mart Corner Shopping Center. And that center was actually built after our uh, market went in. That, uh, that shopping center is two stories. It has 15 tenants, including two markets, uh, a restaurant, massage, a whole array of different uses in there. Uh, they have an, uh, a driveway on Elk, uh, full access, two-way driveway along Elk uh, that's already been established and that is currently existing. We ourselves are looking at just a, an egress driveway only uh, for exit purposes and actually would run along the side of the commercial parking structure and then exit onto Glendale Avenue. So in terms of the design, uh, the compatibility, <clears throat> and what we think in terms of function, we feel that this certainly fits in with this area. I'll uh, conclude my remarks. We did review the staff report, uh, the one mitigation measure as it relates to landscaping or providing the landscape plan, <coughs> and we uh, agree to comply with that. And that concludes my remarks. I do have uh, uh, John O here from traffic. I also have a representative from the John's Market with me here as well. Thank you. Thank you very much. I was going to say, if anybody has a question, go ahead and ask. <coughs> Documentation about using two additional spaces. How are you going to provide that? How long it's going to take so that people can rent out uh, this EPD zone? How, how are you going to address that? Well, typically what we do is there's an application that the city currently has, which is called a parking use permit. And there are certain criteria that's established within that. Uh, I followed that. I used that as a kind of a framework, if you will. Uh, whatever the, the re recommendations or whatever the requirements are within that document, it has to be parking within a certain distance. And also, whatever the city requires for documentation, we would follow that as well. So however it's been established for that, uh, Commissioner Historian, we would follow that. Right. 
in that same um, venue when Mrs. Gooch's existed on Glendale, which is now laser, what tag, whatever. It had an uh, a ancillary parking uh, spaces across the street. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and uh, what there was signage everywhere so you knew where there was additional parking available. Is that part of the requirement? Because if it's not, it would want to be a condition that I certainly would want us to put in there. So John's is a very busy, I mean, it's like our super king. And in a lot of ways, it's extremely well loved and, and uh, the traffic is pretty intense. <coughs> You failed to mention the removal of the three parking spaces on Elk for this. And so there's really five parking spaces that are being removed. There's a lot of people who will now, I think, uh, park on Elk and easily come up to the easier route now. So <coughs> um, I am <coughs> concerned with the five spaces being gone because the three city spaces um, were probably used by John's employees and patrons. If I may, uh, is there a question there? <coughs> I'm asking I mean if, if they're you're going to accommodate those three spaces that are being removed from Elk. Uh, do you have an answer? We, we don't control the public parking or the off-site parking spaces. So we're responsible for what's on site and we're looking to address what our square footage is and what the use is on site, not off site. But if this use removes them, then you are controller. Uh, Commissioner Vanderbilt, we're, we're not deliber deliberating right now. Very good. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, I wouldn't deliberate with the applicant anyway. Well, uh, the next speaker is John Bagdanian. Um. Mr. Chairman, members of the <coughs> Commission, thank you very much. I just wanted to address the issue of traffic. Uh, as commissioners mentioned, this is a very busy market, and there is a very heavy pedestrian volume that crosses the driveway. So if we did traffic counts at the driveway, and 70% of the traffic is coming from the west on Colorado, makes a right turn in, and then uh, they all exit on Colorado, back on Colorado. So um, from that ratio, if we were to, you asked the question about having a one-way driveway in, uh, then that would put 100% of the traffic entering the, uh, the market, which is about 2,500 cars a day. They all would have to go out on elk. So we were trying to balance it out. 1,200 are almost coming in, 1,200 are exiting. Uh, there's about 100 vehicles on a daily basis technically violate that left turn restriction coming out of the driveway, unfortunately. So if, assuming 1,200 going in, 1,200 coming out, uh, we're assuming that 50% of the <coughs> traffic which is coming in will exit onto Elk and they will use Glendale Avenue to go back north on Glendale Avenue or go west on Colorado. Uh, so to, to not put all that traffic onto Elk. Having said that, existing because of the restriction, right now traffic was coming out of the market. In order to go back on west, what they have to do is go next signal, which is Everett, make a right turn or a <coughs> left turn. If they make a right turn, they're back on Elk to go back to Glendale Avenue to go north. Or they make a left turn, they go up on Everett to uh, Orange Grove or Harvard. They can put that traffic back onto the um, you know, residential street. So that's why we were trying to remedy that, just at least get half of that traffic exit on Elk. And that would technically reduce the conflict between the pedestrians, not only pedestrians at the driveway, but internally, you know, people are doing shopping, they got cars, they come in, they park, <coughs> and then it just delays the vehicles actually entering the driveway. Again, it's a very busy market, successful, you know, you mentioned Commissioner Vandegrim, the super king. It's a small super king <laughs> on Colorado. So that is what we thought it would be a, you know, a solution that would help the safety and access in that location. Uh, one second. Are you done with your uh, That was my extent of my presentation. Oh, okay. If you have other questions, I'll be happy to address. Uh, are there any questions? Commissioner Vandegrim. Thank you. Um, Mr. Bagabian, uh, 
my question is deliveries. When you were watching all the traffic, is the are the deliveries all off of Colorado? No, they, they come uh, into there is parking. A, uh, the truck. Uh, the trucks they have. Uh, we've we've checked that out. They they have. There are larger trucks like Coke or you know the uh, soft drink delivery trucks. Uh, the large ones which they get one or two deliveries a week because they make one major delivery, they pull over on Colorado and they park there. They don't necessarily go into the, into the parking lot. The smaller size trucks that are, I want to call it like a UPS type trucks where they do, because it's a market that caters to a lot of different uh, types of uh, products or there. They pull into, there's a driveway, uh, there's a loading area on site where they back into it, they unload their, there's bakery goods and so on and so forth. And they do a lot of that activity on site, not on, on the street. That's the extent of it. There's between 12 to 14 trucks that I checked with uh, Jones Market that they do that, those deliveries. It's a combination. Most of them are smaller size trucks. But the large ones, technically, they, they pull on to Colorado. Most of the groceries that are delivered to with large trucks, they all use Colorado as a drop-off and pick-up. And it's a very quick fifth, five minute you know, activity. Thank you. Are there any other questions? Yes, sir. Commissioner Ascoli? Uh, I understand what carrying capacity is. I don't understand what environmental carrying Sure. Uh, the Glendale circulation element of the general plan has uh, a what's called environmental capacity for various good classifications, major arterials, minor arterials, collectors, residential streets, or local streets. And so ideally you want to, on a residential street of such as Elk, uh, the capacity or environmental capacity is 2,500. Once you start exceeding 2,500, then you start having problems with the residents in terms of on-street parking, in terms of people pulling out of their driveway. There's too much traffic on, on Elk. And there are many streets in Glendale that are residential and have higher than 2,500 vehicles. So we said, let's look at the volume of traffic in case we shift, put the driveway there, where would that be in comparison to 2,500 on Elk? Elk right now, we counted during the weekend. The weekend carries about 1,600 cars. So if you shifted about 50% of that traffic onto Elk, it will be about 2,145 or 2,100 cars, still below that 2,500 uh, threshold. That's, 2500 that's correct. That's that's what's in the circulation element. So uh, if I don't understand, you're referring to a report K uh, figure, I don't know if figure number three and figure number two. And I'm adding outside of the parentheses, which I believe are the weekdays, and the numbers that are inside parentheses, which are the weekends. Mm -hmm. uh, it seems to me that more cars come in as opposed to leaving the site when I do the math. What happens to those cars? Do they stay there and never stay there? What kind of a way? Uh, whenever we do traffic counts where we put tubes at the driveway or the street, uh, you never get 100% accuracy as far as how many cars are going in and how many cars are going out. So if you look at the inbound and outbound total for the weekday, it's about 100 cars off. Uh, the inbound outbound on weekend, on Saturday is about two vehicles off. So we don't generally correct them because we know that there's always a you know 5% fluctuation in counts. And that's due to vehicles that are already in the parking lot, for example, before the count begins, or vehicles that stay after uh, the counts are done. So we did it during the uh, operation hours of the market. But what we do is also during the peak hour, which is the critical time, is we actually have a person count the car. So for accuracy purposes, that's one of the number that we're concerned about. But on the overall daily basis, you always have the fluctuation of slight percentage, which I don't think is significant uh, when you look at the total number. Yeah. Well, is this is a total, what you see in the table two is a total inbound and table.
Yeah, as I said, it, it, it could flex for that is normal. Anytime, even when you do traffic counts on streets from Saturday to Sunday or from a Tuesday to Wednesday, there's always a 5 to 10 percent fluctuation. But we don't make the adjustment because we know that as there's a variable there. But even if you assume that, that there was an additional 100 cars, like we didn't count accurately, if you add it to the percentage we think it will shift to elk, we're still below that environmental threshold that we always strive for to keep it below 2,500 vehicles. That's true, because these markets, uh, sometimes these markets that are local, residents use the market for parking. So they park early in the morning, and they start leaving when the market opens or throughout the day. And I know the markets usually, when I talk to management, they, they don't want to do that because on-street parking technically becomes a problem. So some people park on, res uh, on the market parking lot, and they, they leave early in the morning or during the day sometime. But they don't tow the vehicles, they leave them there, and it adds up to the count. Can you tell me that when Jones closes, I don't know what time they close at Fox Cross, let's say about 10 o'clock. I think they're, they're 11, 11, 11 o'clock. At 11 o'clock. They do not chain off uh, the, uh, the parking lot, and residents around use the parking lot? The parking yes, lot they, the parking lot. <coughs> right there. It's not chained off. It's not chained It does not get chained off. No. That's an answer to those three parking spaces that may be lost on on L because if if at night you're providing 58 parking spaces free for the residents of the area I think that's a great cost benefit analysis when you compare it to the three that may be lost for the water or fire purposes. Make sense? Unless it's during the day. We're not delivering this <laughs> Are you done sir? Yes. Uh, yes, yes if there are no more questions that's all. Thank you very much. Sir. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Since we don't have any more uh, comments on the agenda item, uh, we will be closing the. Well, can we ask staff? Of course, of course. So the deliberation has begun, and if you have any further questions to ask the staff, by all means. May I? I have a letter here. Correct. That's when, that's when the PPD was initially approved. So was this a cost from working for the city of Monroe? I'm not sure. Um, yes, he was. I approved the PPD and said, okay, we will approve it, but we will never give you an access from L. I know that the PPD was approved by fact because it's there. I don't, I don't know the other. Yeah, and, and it goes on saying that it's quite likely that the city council at the time would not have created the parking overlay zone to affect the property at all if it could not restrict this driveway access. To me, this is conjecture. So I just want to be on record that the way that this is worded okay. amounts to okay. nothing but conjecture. Sure. Just get closer to the microphone, please. Yeah. This amounts yeah. to nothing but conjecture. So I just wanted to be on record. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> Mr. Manager? In reference to this same letter, though, I think that what is being suggested that be part of the consideration of this alteration is that we have in front of us 
those historic documents. And we, I ask if we do have those here. To um, me, that would, that would solve the discussion of conjecture or not. I'm just reading what was in the letter, not in the end. It says it is quite likely True. That, this, that this is quite likely. Right. right. And conjecture means based on incomplete information. Well, for us, for sure. So that would be. For the, for the, for, for the person who wrote the letter. Well, that's not conjecture about conjecture. <laughs> Having said that, um, there's an application before us, and the facts speak for themselves. Um, Commissioner B. What, Floyd Goodman? Yes. What do you mean? I did. did you? Yes, I, I closed the public hearing, and then we went into deliberation. That's the way it's done. So now we're deliberating. Commissioner Lee. Thank you. Um, I heard the. Uh, see the benefits um, of what's been proposed here. Um, and also I see the um, uh, I guess I'm, I'm supposed to be getting closer. Yes, punch the button. Oh. <laughs> oh what Mr. Chifoy was on all the time. Okay. <clears throat> Am I on? Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, as I see the, um, uh, the benefits of um, what's being proposed here, and I also see the, um, some of the concerns that our fellow commissioners have, um, and you know, some of the, um, I guess, um, uh, concerns that Landrigan, uh, Commissioner Landrigan has brought up as far as the, um, uh, the loss of uh, you know, street parking versus, um, you know, the parking lot being, you know, open to the public, uh, you know, at the night, night time for public usage and all that. But, you know, I, I guess um, uh, just looking at, um, you know, what what is really uh, uh, benefit here, and I, I see I see the benefit of having the access um, onto the Alta Avenue, and it is under the, um, the threshold of the. Uh, traffic study, so I have no problems with uh, approving this uh, proposal. I can go second, Mr. Uh, Chair, if you don't mind, as far as deliberation is concerned, unless you're... Well, one second. A second? Well, There's no... We're, de we're deliberating. Yeah, we're oh, I, see, I know what we're doing, it's just that there was nothing to second. Oh, but you want to go second? Yes. Then, by all means, go ahead and go sure. second. Although, so, yeah, Commissioner ahead. Landrigan has uh, made certain statements, so technically speaking, you're going first, but that's okay. Well, I, I can wait. I have until we're hearing it. I'm yeah. happy to hear it. So here is what I've done. In the real estate business, we count and depend on what is known in the industry as walk score. And walk score really um, measures the walkability of a location, an address in any locality in, in Southern California. This has a very high walk score. This location is 600 East Colorado. In fact, the walk score is 93. And then it has a transit score of 50, which is half, half of the walkability. What this shows me, by the way, this is about maybe two minute bike ride to downtown Glendale, 10 minute walking to downtown Glendale as well. What this shows me is that although Jones gets its share of traffic, people from outside of the trade area coming and, and uh, uh, wanting to shop in there, which is exactly what we want when we are supporting our businesses. But what also this tells me is because of its walk score is that you have a lot of walking traffic in there, which, is, which corroborates what JBA's report really states as far as uh, folks walking and buying their stuff from Jones Market. I think 
like anything else, you can make the findings. There is always what it boils down to is cost benefit analysis. So you have a merchant that at night, at least at the present time, allows the residents use the premises for parking. And this merchant wants to be able to create a better flow of traffic so the queuing on Colorado and Glendale Avenue would not be as horrendous as sometimes that, that I've been there, it has been. I have no issues. I think that you, I can reconcile the reduction of two parking spaces for the greater good that it could achieve. I do have only one concern, and that is if there are any signs on the elk side, those need to be traffic directional signs, whether it's like the right turn or left turn or what have you, as opposed to any marketing signs and uh, uh, business identification signs, especially illuminated at night. Because after all, elk is a residential area. Thank you, Mr. Chair. We'll have to go now. Um, Mr. Krause's letter does, and, and we got this at the very beginning of the meeting, so we had a very short time to read it. Uh, does give me pause because I would like to make the determination on this based upon some of the original planning documents, which we don't have. I feel very uncomfortable making a uh, recommendation to council to do this. I, uh, without those documentations, I have a concern uh, with impacting residential areas. Um, I, f I feel there's already an impact as, as it is. I think this is going to increase that impact, not just with the traffic, but um, with some of the other activities that go along with that traffic and people eating and sitting. <coughs> so I. I would not be able to support uh, a change on the P, PD, the precise specific plan here, um, without that information. So without having that in hand, that my vote would be not to recommend changing it. Uh, Commissioner Landergren, uh, when you say that you, there are certain documents that you want to see, can you, and I don't, uh, I don't expect you to know exactly what the titles of those documents are, can you generally give us an idea what you were talking about? Well, I would like to see what the last um, uh, approval was. The PPD zone was a different uh, planning determination um, until a couple of years ago. So there were two different definitions of it. Now we have a second definition that we're applying that is different than the original definition. And I was, and you were here, I think, when that determination occurred. So to me, that creates, you know, comp comparing apples to fruit salad. And, uh, you know, I would like to have a better um, handle on the original determination and, the, in and the, the reasoning behind it before I make uh, and feel comfortable making a recommendation that this is in, in indeed a simple um, element, or if it was, as Mr. Krauss indicates, um, meant to, to prevent or discourage uh, access to elk, that would be an important piece of information for me to make this uh, determination. Um, Any other questions? Uh, um, <laughs> The sort of historic records on this are uh, a little bit sketchy and um, brief. I am looking at uh, the staff report for, um, at the time, it was change of zone from R1250 to R1250P overlay that was date that is dated March 28, uh, 1986. Um, under the transportation um, section of the staff report, and the staff report is much different, 30, 
years ago than it is today. Um, it does mention that um, Elk Avenue provides access to the zone change site. Said street will, said street is improved with a 36 foot roadway within a 60 foot right of way. However, no driveway access is proposed on that. That's the only mention of, of that. It's, there's no evaluation, there's no judgment there, it's just a statement. Um, so in other words, there was not a condition hmm. that the PPD was approved uh, only because they would have approved it only because Elk should have stayed closed and remained closed. There was never a condition of, sat of, of that nature. Gotcha. And that's what the letter from Mr. Uh, Cross <coughs> alludes to. That's why I called it, it's a conjecture based on incomplete information. Uh, actually, it doesn't because it doesn't really talk about the PPD as it is in that form, different from it is now, and those intentions. So, I, you know, we don't always all agree. To me, I have a difficult time making that determination based upon the understanding of the change in, in the, what that land use element is now and was. That's just the discomfort I have in making that decision. Uh, I would like to make a couple of comments on, on this matter myself. Um, there's the issue of the two uh, spots, parking spots that will be lost because of this, uh, the driveway, uh, the applicants, uh, traffic consultant, Maybe the applicant's represent, uh, representative uh, made mention of we will secure additional parking uh, parking spots at the nearby uh, Los Angeles Federal Credit Union, and we will provide whatever documentation that the, the city needs. Um, that's all fair and good, but then it, uh, Commissioner Landrigan made uh, mention that in the old Mrs. Gooch's, we used to have uh, signage directing the customers to the, uh, the ancillary parking spots. Uh, the only reason I'm br bringing this up is I'm not so sure if having signage directing traffic away from the main parking area uh, to an ancillary parking area, which contains only two parking slips, does any good in any event. Uh, so, and uh, th that's the first thing. The second thing, I don't see any sort of um, reference to uh, the mitigation proposal in the uh, or the, the what do you call it motion that we have been presented with. Uh, so that would be recommendation, yeah. exactly recommendation to the city council that we've been presented with. So that would have to find its way in here uh, somehow. Finally, although I do understand that. The letter that we received from our old colleague does raise some issues. Uh, what I heard sort of gave me some, some re you know, uh, peace of mind in this regard because uh, this matter has not been an issue. Uh, the concerns that uh, Mr. Krauss raises has not been an issue in the past. So I don't think even if we do have access to the historical records, we would have uh, any mention of it one way or another. So I'm uh, willing to let that go. Uh, I am concerned with the fact that in addition to the two parking spots that will be lost in the parking lot proper, there will be three additional uh, uh, spaces lost in the street adjacent. Uh, reference has been made that, well, the, the owner of the market, the applicant, is providing parking spots for the neighbors in the evening hours. Although functionally that may be true, that is in fact not the case. No one is giving any permission of any sort, I assure you. Uh, 
just because the, the parking lot is not chained off doesn't mean that is an automatic permission for people to come and park. In any event, the parking lot, uh, the, the parking is being done after closing of the, the, the store, which is past 10, 11 o'clock at night. Uh, despite the fact that it is some benefit, it is uh, the minimal, the minimus at best. But it is still there. Uh, I do think that this will help with the overall circulation. Um, it's, uh, Mr. Bagdanian made a very good pre presentation, and it makes sense. Intuitively, it makes sense. We are allowing people to come in. Half of them will go out from where they came in, and the other half will go out, out the back. We will lose some spots, yes. Uh, we were told that uh, the, the cost-benefit analysis pencils out, as it were. I tend to agree. Uh, in any event, um, I think we have all made our positions relatively well known. If there are any motions, I'm willing to entertain them. I'd like to make a motion, uh, uh, Mr. Chair. By all means. That uh, upon consideration of proposed ordinance relating to a zone map amendment to precise plan of development PPD on property located at 533 and 539, East Elk Avenue, the Planning Commission here recommends that the City Council adopt the mitigated negative declaration of proposed amendment to the precise plan of design consistent with the provisions of Title 30 of the Glendale Municipal Code 1995. Uh, commissioners, if I may interject, <clears throat> uh, I apologize, but if we could make one slight modification to the motion. Um, after the word, after the words mitigated negative declaration and, if we could um, strike proposed amendment to the, and instead add, adopt an ordinance amending the existing precise plan of design and amending the zoning map consistent with the provisions of Title 30 of the Glenelg Municipal Code 1995. As stipulated by the city attorney. Thank you. Second. Second. We don't want to add the, the condition that the applicant will uh, mitigate the loss of the two uh, parking spots by securing additional parking from a neighboring uh, structure. My question, Mr. Chair, is, is uh -huh. that is that a condition. valid to add conditions to a change in a PPD? because it's not a typical conditional use. So th I think I would prefer to have an alternative. All right, we'll leave it as is. Uh, motion has been made. It has been seconded. Uh, roll call, please. Planning Commissioners Astorian? Yes. Lee? Aye. Landrigan? No. And Chairperson Manukia? Aye. The ayes have it. Moving on. New business. Location 330 to 334 Salem Street, subdivision of land, tentative track number 74298, case number PTTMCP 1624030. May I have the staff, staff report, please? Thank you, Mr. Manukian, Chairman Manukian, I should say, uh, Planning Commissioners. The case before you is a 12-unit condominium subdivision for a project that is currently under construction at 330 through 334 Salem Street. Uh, the property is located in an R1250 zoning, which is a high-density residential zone and with a general plan designation of high density residential. All of the surrounding properties on north, south, east, and west are also zoned R1250 and are currently developed with multifamily residential prod properties and projects. The 12 unit project was approved by the Design Review Board uh, back in 2015 of June 30th, that would be 2015, and as mentioned, is currently under construction. The project complies with all of the zoning standards for the R1250 zone, and I'd like to point out that there was an error in the staff report. The wrong table was included in your staff report. The corrected table was distributed for you, or to you, mm -hmm. 
um, and based on the density, the building height, the unit types, and recreational amenities, parking, and landscaping, as well as private outdoor space and common outdoor space, all of those standards have been met by the current proposal. So it is in compliance with the R1250 zoning standards. The staff report also included um, an analysis with regards to the consistency with the general plan and the various elements of the general plan. The property is, as mentioned, located in a high density residential, so the proposed 12 units on this uh, 13,000 plus square foot lot is consistent with that land use designation. The, uh, the project site is also located on a local street as identified in our circulation element with a 50-foot wide roadway. So again, it has one driveway access off of Salem Street uh, leading to the 29 space parking, subterranean parking space garage. So the project complies with the parking standards in the zoning code and has ac adequate access off of a local street. In terms of the noise or element, the property is located in a 65 CNEL or below contour area and is surrounded by other similar multifamily developments, so it's consistent. In terms of housing element, the condominium project fulfills two goals of the housing element. One would be to contribute to a wide range of housing types, and the second to be um, an increase in the opportunity for home ownership. The, in terms of historic preservation, the previous uh, residences that were demolished were deemed not to be historically significant, so that was not an issue. And last but not least, the site is not located in a hazard zone as identified in the safety element, nor is it located in an area uh, determined or designated for recreation in the open space preservation element. Therefore, staff, given the consistency with the zoning code and the general plan elements, recommends approval of the tentative track map 74298 subject to compliance with uh, 25 conditions as listed in the draft motion and in compliance with the subdivision map act and chapter 16 of the Glendale Municipal Code. That concludes staff presentation. I would be happy to answer any questions you may have. Are there any questions? As usual, crystal Thank you. Thank you. Uh, may I have Mr. Hike Martirosian, please? Mr. Chair, uh, Commissioners, congratulations. Uh, my name is Hike Martirosian. I'm a track engineer. My office is in uh, Glendale. Uh, the application in front of you is for an aerospace subdivision for 12 units, which is currently under construction. Uh, the project got the design review board approval back in 2015, and we received our uh, building uh, permit back in, I mean, a couple of months ago, uh, end of uh, 2016. Uh, currently, the building is under construction. Uh, unit sizes are uh, ranges between 1,400 to 1,600. There are <coughs> eight two bedrooms and four three bedrooms. Uh, there are 29 parking spaces within semi-subterranean parking, including three uh, guest parking uh, for the tenants. Uh, we have uh, no, uh, we did not ask for any modification or any variances from the zoning or building uh, uh, codes, and we are in compliance with all the uh, municipal codes. And uh, we will comply with all the condition imposed on this project by uh, uh, city planning for subdivision purposes. And um, uh, I don't have any other uh, thing to add uh, unless you guys have any uh, question to ask. Or they more than happy to answer. Thank you very much. Are there any questions of the applicant? Thank you very much. Mr. Thank you. Uh, with that, I, I'm closing the public uh, hearing. And we are entering the deliberations. Commissioner Emanuel. I'd like to make a motion um, that upon consideration of tentative track number 74298 and after reviewing the record files and reports and all documentary evidence submitted with regard to said tentative track 
that Timothy Track number 74298 is hereby approved and subject to compliance with the State Subdivision Map Act, Chapter 16.16 and 16.24, Title 16 of the Glendale Municipal Code, Title 30 of the Glendale Municipal Code, and the 25 additional conditions listed below, and the Planning Commission hereby makes <coughs> the following findings of fact. <coughs> And they are on this piece of paper. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Thank you for your appreciation. Is there a second? <coughs> second. With that, may I have roll call, please? Planning Commissioners Astoria. Yes. Landrigan. Aye. Lee. Aye. And Chairperson Manusky. Aye. Thank you very much. Thank Moving you. on to item number two under our new business location 370. 374 and 376 Salem Street. And we do have a correction on the track map number. Um, as you'll notice, you actually have track map number on your agenda twice. Yes. Um, the correct number on this one is 74369. It was correctly noticed, and it's also correct in all the staff reports. Unfortunately, it was just incorrect in our agenda, so okay. I just wanted to make that announcement. Okay, good happened. Very good. So subdivision of land tentative track number three four three seven four three six nine case number PPT MCP one six two forty thirty. May I have the presentation staff uh, presentation? Sure, Mr. Chair and uh, members of the commission. Um, the project before you is to subdivide a three-story, eighteen-unit multifamily residential building for condominium purposes. Uh, it includes 41 parking spaces within a semi-subterranean parking garage, which is accessed from Salem. Uh, it is an 18-unit um, development. It has a composition mix for bedroom count of three one-bedrooms and 15 two-bedrooms. Uh, the subject property consists of three lots, uh, approximately 18,500 square feet. The zoning of the property is R1250 high density. The surrounding properties are also zoned R1250, with the exception of the property to the south, which is residential, which is R1650. Um, history of the project, it was reviewed by the Design Review Board uh, previously in May of 2016 and approved. Um, the project is currently uh, under building plan check. Um, overall, it complies with zoning requirements and it's still being reviewed for uh, building compliance. Um, under the building code. Um, in regards for consistency with the general plan, um, I'm going to kind of go over the each line item for the general plan for each element as terms as in terms of the land use. 18 unit uh, proposal with this lot with the density complies with the high density residential designation. Uh, as far as circulation, it is on, on it, it, it fronts Salem, which is a local street and is also shared with a corner. Uh, on the street side, which is North Columbus Avenue, which is an urban collector. Uh, both of these type of streets by the circulation element uh, are adequate for this type of development. Um, as far as the noise element, it's, uh, it's located in a 65 C CNEL uh, area, uh, which is acceptable, acceptable for multifamily development. Uh, as far as housing, uh, it fulfills two goals. Uh, it contributes to a wide range of housing types, and the second one, it increases opportunity for home ownership. Uh, as far as the historic element, uh, existing on the property right now are three craftsman-style dwelling units on the lot. Uh, these buildings were included with the 2007 um, Craftsman Reco Reconnaissance Survey. Uh, they were given the designation, designation of 6L, which is ineligible for local designation, however, may have um, a local interest uh, as required by the applicant uh, during our design review board application, uh, a historic resource uh, assessment was provided, which the consultant uh, determined that there, there was nothing, no persons or events uh, occurred on the property. So therefore, it also concluded that it is also ineligible for a local designation. Um, the site is not located in the hazard area of the self, uh, safety element, nor is it the property uh, designated for recreation or an open space area within the city. Uh, as far as staff's recommendation by consideration uh, by the consistency of the general plan, staff overall recommends approval of this um, tentative track map uh, with the listed conditions within the report. Um, 
or the, I'm sorry, the proposed motion. Um, this concludes staff's uh, presentation. If you have any questions, be more than happy to answer. Thank you very much. Are there any questions? I have one question. Mm -hmm. the, the, uh, the wheelchair access off of uh, Salem, I'm seeing stairs going up to the units. How, how, does, how is the access provided? Um, well, the, there is a wheelchair access along uh, Salem, um, and there's going to be a lift, which is behind the 20-foot front setback. Uh, by on page, well, uh, the, the, Mr. Joe, these are individual unit access stairways. Do each one of them have a lift? No, no. That that's the the, the side you're looking at the rendering. Uh, that is along North Columbus. However, there is a wheelchair chair lift. This which is this is Columbus. Th that's correct. You're pointing. Um, I'm 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 looking at Salem now. That is the Columbus side. Uh, what is this then? That is Salem. Well, your your water feature on your plan is on Columbus side. I, I would want to refer to, if you look at page, I'm sorry, it's sheet A1.0, uh, which should be the site plan. Uh, it, it, could, it should show uh, exactly the orientation of Columbus and Salem, um, and it should show where the where wheelchair uh, wheelchair lift is. It's which runs oh, okay. adjacent to the uh, the drive Got it. the driveway. My, mis my mistake. I'm clear. Very good. Very Thank you. Any other questions from the staff? I do have one question. Um, the removal of three single-family homes and then the addition of 12, correct, units? 18 uh, units. 18 units. Why, is, why was there no traffic study as to the impact on Salem? Well, the, the, the zoning of this property is uh, R1250, uh, 1250, which is designated for high-density high residential. So it is consistent. Follow the requirements. Correct, and also by the circulation element, it does the Salem is a local street and Columbus is a urban collector um, by these uh, streets by designated by circulation and it does um, it is adequate for this type of development and it's not and since CEQA it's exempt from CEQA there's no CEQA requirements for that Th that's correct it's in it, it uh, by this project here it was um, class 32 by the infill mm -hmm. development yeah All right. thank you thank you very much uh, with that, I would like to invite the engineer on the project, Rami Awad. Good evening, Mr. Chair, uh, Planning Commissioners and staff. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to be here tonight. Um, we're happy to present this project to you. Um, it's a subdivision of a three-story building, multifamily for 18 condominium units. And um, we have reviewed the staff report and the city conditions of approvals, and we agree with it, and we'll be happy to answer any questions you may have. Thank you very much. Uh, commissioners, are there any questions? We seem to be good. Thank you very much, sir. With that, I'm closing the public uh, hearing portion of our uh, meeting, and I would like to open for deliberation Commissioners, please. I'm ready to make the motion. Uh, before you do, are you good with it? Good. good with it? Very good. Go ahead. Upon consideration of tentative track number 74369, and after reviewing the record files, reports, and all documentary evidence submitted with regard to said tentative track, that tentative track number 74369 is hereby approved subject to compliance with the State Sub Subdivision Map Act chapters 16.16 .16 and 16.24 of Title 16 of the Glendale Municipal Code, Title 30 of the Glendale Municipal Code, and the 62 additional, 62 additional conditions listed below. And the Planning Commission hereby makes each and all of the following findings of fact. So I have with a the 62. Oh. 
Do I have a second, please? Second. May I have roll call, please? Planning Commissioner Zastorian. Yes. Landrigan. Yes. Lee. Aye. Chairperson Manuki. Aye. With that, we move to the ninth item on our agenda, Community Development Department updates. Do we have any, please? Uh, yes, we do have an update, um, Chairman Lee, members of the commission. There was an appeal that was, um, you had an approved, you actually had a denial that you did of a wireless facility at 700 Dunsmore Avenue, that's in Dunsmore Park. Um, that was appealed, it was scheduled for council and then it was continued to April 18th, 2017. So we wanted to make you aware of that. Um, we also had oh, an appeal of a dis- that date again? Yes, it's April 18th, right. 2017. Um, and actually that was continued at the applicant's request. And then we also had an appeal of a denial that you made of the project at 2116 Rimcrest Drive. That was a request for a tentative track map or a tentative parcel map rather. That was, your denial was also appealed. And we don't have a hearing date yet, but we anticipate that that will be scheduled for the city council shortly. And then the last item we had um, you might have heard quite a bit about it. We have accessory dwelling units. There was a large change in the state law. Um, before that, before January 1st, we used to prohibit it. Uh, state law preempted us, so now sec accessory dwelling units are permitted. Um, right now, we're working on an urgency ordinance to take to council. We anticipate that that will be going in the end of this month on January 31st to council. And we're anticipating that there'll be direction given to us, and eventually you'll see an ordinance uh, probably sooner than later. We wanted to make you aware of it because if you do watch the TV, you will see something going on 31st that has not come to you first. I wanted to make you aware of it. Very good. And I believe one of the major parts of that, what is being proposed, Mr. Chair, is the 30% of existing floor plan threshold versus what is being right now in this in the new ordinance, in the state ordinance, that is 50. Yeah. And so that is going to create some, as they say, curveball. <laughs> well, it'll be fun. It'll be a fun year. Uh, are you done? And that concludes staff's comments. Very good. Now, do I have any comments from the commissioners? No? Uh, oh. I Go ahead. May I? I'd, I'd like to thank Commissioner Lee for his leadership during our last year as our chair. It was a delight to have you as our leader and I wanted to thank you so much for that. Well, well thank you. Uh, it was a pleasure, an honor. Uh, so I'd like to extend my gratitude to the commissioner as well. Very thank good. Thank you, Commissioner Chair. It's Thanksgiving early. <laughs> thank uh, very good. Uh, I do have a question from the city uh, council, city, city attorney's office. So, uh, today we had a situation where the applicant, uh, by right, had 15 minutes to talk, and he brought along his uh, consultant, traffic consultant. Now, my instinct was to say, the two of you together have 15 minutes. I should have done that, right? Right. Uh, it's, really, it's really up to you, uh, Chairman Uti, and okay. whatever you wish to do, but that is typically the practice. Very good. That's what we'll do. Uh, also, uh, trying to be a good boy uh, under the Brown Act and all that stuff. Uh, when, when an application is made, and even if they're very, very clear and there, there are no questions, before you make a uh, motion, please alert me that you have a motion to make so I can inquire from the other commissioners whether they have any comments, because I don't want you to make a uh, motion uh, and uh, have another commissioner who still has some thinking to do or some questions to ask and whatnot. So give me that one uh, second to basically poll the rest of the commissioners regarding their intentions. I'm happy to do that, but in Robert's rules, yeah. you can make a motion seconded and, and discuss it still. So it doesn't preempt discussion. discussion. No, I understand that. But I w in order to make everything a little bit more um, smooth, so that we don't have to go back and forth. You just give me a look, I will poll, and we'll move forward. If you don't want to do it, you don't have to do it. That's fine as well. Um, is, with that. Is, is a nod and a wink. 
under Robert's rule. You can. Well, I am not the. I'm not the expert on Robert's rule. <laughs> Ask uh, Commissioner Landrigan. Uh, Bob's rules are mine. Bob. <laughs> All right. With that, uh, I move that we adjourn. So moved. So moved.